right, what's going on guys? So, got some uh, pretty exciting news, at least I think anyway. Um, I called up NSR and talked to Ross Pilgreen and he ended up getting me set up with a full hydro kit for the X3 of mine. So, I'm sure if any of you guys know or ride hard or get into any, any sort of big rocks or hill climbing whatever you want to call it i'm sure you've seen the steering wheel ripped out of your hands more than one time so um i was personally fed up with it so uh all the time wearing out the stock steering racks tie rod ends are all little so usually wear out those um i've just seen a bunch of problems out of everything with anything factory can am the only thing I've ever seen they've made any good is a transmission. So, knock on wood, that's the only thing I haven't broke yet. So, um, but I definitely uh, think it's going to be a game changer. So, I'll uh, let you guys check this thing out. So, I'll say, uh, I don't know for 100% sure, but I know it's not real publicly known that uh, these are a full direct bolt-in kit um i've yet to bolt it in yet so we'll see just how much of a bolt-in kit it is so um mind you i paid full price for all this so he told me he wanted an honest review of his product so that's what we're going to give him so definitely looks like a uh, nice kit straight out of the box i will say one bad thing about it already um you'll see a few packages and everything but you don't see one piece of instructions on how to put it all together side note i was wrong about the kit the my email had a typo on it and that is why i didn't have any instructions he sent over uh what appears to be a very detailed and step-by-step -step, uh booklet that comes with it so that was my bad on that or whoever's on the typo so I uh, just wanted to clarify that. I know you got to separate the side case. Looks like it's got a crank bolt with some sort of locking pins in it um, for the pulley to go on the side cover to obviously run your belt. Um, I will say the dude's been super helpful so far with trying to order the kit. I'm pretty confident that I pick up the phone he, or... Uh, send him a call he's probably gonna pick up the phone and uh tell me anything i need to know about it but definitely a super super heavy duty kit compared to anything else i've seen see so, uh the rod ends are massive um way bigger than factory um his tie rods all custom made himself now um it's all 70 75 billet aluminum so we know those ought to be pretty strong so this uh ram kit all the mounting and everything on it, it's all made out of looks like some 3 8 plate steel it's all got some nice welds on it it's got uh huge inner rod ends shouldn't be uh breaking those or wearing those out prematurely i would call it um it's definitely a heavy kit i believe the box said it weighed 97 pounds and minus some cardboard i'd say you're probably uh probably right around 90 pounds you're gonna be throwing on the old girl so i know you got stock steering rack and all that stuff that comes out but i'll try to see if i can get a weight on that to weigh the difference between the two i suppose um bracketry and everything all looks super nice i know the pump bolts onto this and it's got your adjustment looks like it's got some locks even laser cut in there so the bolt kind of locks into place in a couple different places so uh he sent me i don't think these are going to come in your standard kit uh when we built my bulkhead we stretched the machine an inch to basically make the lower control arms not have to have a a through bolt go through a tube so we got a double shear bracket on the back side um so we stretched it forward an inch and he sent me some shims to uh, make up for that and adjust however I need it. So obviously these are going to go on the back side of that bracket here to adjust that out or whatever we need to do with it. So 
Uh, looks like it's got some sort of guide. Uh, I know these these bolt into the factory control arm mounts. Um, I assume that's just like another reassuring support to try to keep that ram from rotating up and down. So uh, don't really see any of a wear strip on that. So it's kind of metal on metal. So we'll see kind of how that's going to wear. Uh, or make squeak or noise but uh, i know a lot of the guys racing this is what they swear by so we're gonna see what we can do with it in an old beater trail car that ain't scared to go show up to a couple hill killing events and see if we can run with the big boys this year so uh, i'll just give you a first glimpse at this and let you guys check it out like i say it's all super nice parts um it's got a really nice uh, i believe it's a sweet pump um super nice all hydraulic lines like I say everything's pre-made um super heavy duty looking uh orbital valve um nice nice o-ring fitting so nothing should leak um send you all the gaskets uh even comes with an oil filter he said the only thing you gotta come up with is uh oil to throw back in it and some power steering fluid uh, I say it's got all your gaskets for oil cooler, uh, coolant neck housing, um, and then he machines the factory Can Am side cover. It comes with a new water pump and new water pump gear. I've heard those are known to fail, but I got about 6,000 miles on mine. I don't think I've ever changed that. So I guess we'll uh, do a little comparison when I get mine ripped apart. But um, Definitely looks like it has some very nice quality so far. So we're going to see what I can come up with and start getting her tore apart and thrown together. So I'll uh, try to take you through in any big step-by-step -step issues or the, definitely going to go through the installation process of all this stuff and let you guys check it out so i've definitely been super curious about it and i don't know of anybody that's made a video of it so maybe this will be a uh, big change for you hardcore trail riders like me that uh, want to get into some stuff and tired of trying to get your fingers broke or your wrist broke and uh, i know we've all been there and done it we've hit something and had to stop and collect our thoughts for a few minutes about how hard uh, the steering wheel got ripped out of our hands so but that's enough of me rambling on uh i'll try to get some stuff tore apart and take you guys through it as we go all right well first step you're gonna have to do um i know this probably ain't what you see on most of your factory stuff but uh i've got a zrp coolant lines because we got the radiator mounted up in the back so we all went with 16 uh an fittings on everything uh you're gonna have a few bolts to pop out around this dude um this will come off probably gonna get cooling everywhere drop the bolts in the water of course um get this pulled off it looks like you got a sensor that's got to come out um this bracket down here is gonna have to come off so probably have to move this fuel line and hook it out of the way obviously take all your crank bolts around you have to take the oil cooler off take the oil filter out probably unplug the stator and that should get you into the side cover and we'll see what we got after that so, all right well not too bad so far um just, obviously you got a whole bunch of bolts that's around the side you do have to take your uh, oil cooler off you got two bolts that's in behind it that you got to get to um obviously it's gonna make a mess so i'd probably do it somewhere where you can make a mess or go ahead and throw some oil dry down uh, that's why we hadn't rolled it in the shop yet so we'll throw some oil dry here get her cleaned up looks like uh we gotta get this bolt here out of there um uh, probably give all the gears inside of there a good looking uh see this thing's got six thousand miles on it maybe a little more than that now um it's all stock gears so so far they don't look too bad so uh give that a good checking out and start getting everything cleaned back up for the new side cover all right well after you get your uh side cover off obviously you got your new one in the box um you're gonna have these three bolts to take out 
um, swap from your old one to your new one. Um, I put some Loctite on them, tightened those down. Uh, this wire loom sits in a grommet there. Uh, gonna want to definitely get some, probably some good silicone. Make sure you get that nice and clean. Uh, put a little bit of silicone down in that so you ain't got no oil leaks going back together. And don't forget to put, I would call this a check valve, back into the new one so you have oil that goes into your oil filter. So a little spring and slider. Uh, it goes into the hole in the block and everything in there too. So just, uh, don't forget to put that in. So, and we're going to see what it takes to get this uh, new shaft here mounted into the crankshaft on the buggy so i say this is the factory bolt that came out of it um i don't know the torque spec on that but uh hopefully by the time i make the video i'll have that figured out and i can put it in the bottom of it for you so all right throw this in here too um this piece here screws into the crankshaft red loctite on it make sure your threads are nice and clean so your loctite's got something good to uh seal against it gets torqued to 120 foot pounds i had someone else hold the crank bolt on the other side I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it but that's the way i did it hold the crank bolt on the other side torque that down and then you're supposed to drill with a 3 16th drill bit one hole on this side one hole on that side drill in just a little bit and there's two set screws that go in here and you put some loctite on those also drill them in make sure they're flush with the end of the crankshaft and should be good to go to put the side cover back on all right well once you get your two uh holes drilled should look something kind of like that like i say you want to make sure these are uh flush or just a tick past that way they don't stick out um it don't take a whole lot to drill usually you see just a couple shavings fall out and you're pretty close to where it needs to be so kind of sneak up on it it's always better to uh drill a little bit more than to try to figure out how to put it back so. well we got the side cover back on it we got the water neck and everything put on uh crank pulley torques to 20 foot pounds make sure you put some oil on the side cover this is kind of a pain to get locked in there because you gotta get the uh idler gear for the starter pin to line up um, but just take some finesse and you'll get it to go on there um this is directional it has small holes and big holes uh just make sure you got those lined up because obviously you can have it flipped upside down um gonna next step is to start getting all the bracketry lined up for the uh pump and uh bracket and everything and get that put on and get that done and we will move toward the front all right figure we'd show you this part here um this bolts into the Can-Am, factory Can-Am stuff. Um, you do have to clearance a bracket back here, which I had already cut out for the easy steer. Um, just got four bolts here that goes in the front. Your OEM Can-Am knuckle is supposed to fit on this. Uh, mine is different, so we'll have to get a new... Uh, knuckle so we can clamp that on there um all of it fits up inside there still have factory tilt uh we made this because i brought the steering wheel out a little closer to me be a little more relaxed in the car um all this will bolt right back into the factory can am um you could probably do it in the car but for the sake of six bolts i think it is to take it out it's just as easy to take it out and do a uh, lay it on the bench and do it um he says he wants an honest review so i'll give it to him uh, i do feel like the this bracket could be bolted on here a little bit better um it's got some big slots in it the easy steer had four bolts that fit in it um this to get the steering angle lined up for the the tilt wheel does not fit so once an honest review i'm gonna give it so i would definitely say this bracket could use a little bit of work but it does fit there's not a whole lot of feedback on it so i assume it doesn't have to be super super tough but 
definitely probably address that just a little bit to make that mount in there a little nicer and clean it up a little bit but obviously nobody will ever see it so i'm gonna get that thrown back in the car and on to the next one all right well wanted to throw this in here too um this is probably the worst part about this whole thing when you're uh looking to buy it is uh the price of it obviously um it's not cheap by no means um say so i bought this complete kit um the whole thing from ross was uh 4800 bucks so i mean it's definitely not a not a cheap upgrade but when you kind of think about it it's really not all that carried away it's a lot of money right off the top but i mean obviously you're going from that to this so these are 300 bucks roughly depending on who you buy them from so just easy math 300 bucks i believe uh this steering brace is 500 dollars. so you're close to a thousand bucks there uh aftermarket steering unit because we all know stock can and ones are junk this is a uh, an e-power steering kit it's definitely better than the uh, oem one but still not the greatest thing out there running 35s or whatever steering wheels still going to be super heavy slow stuff in the rocks um i have noticed too um me and ross kind of talked about it at the same time upgrading one of these is real nice super atv supposedly makes a pretty good one now too um it's also around a thousand dollar mark bad thing about these are is even if you do get a little bit better steering out of one when they kick out they kick out harder because you're already bound into something or running up a hill and you think you got a hold of the steering wheel and you get to the point where one of those kick out they shut off you're not going to get that from this kit it's going to go or it's not going to work at all so um that thing there you can kick it out and i've done it in the a couple times with it um that is one of the downfalls of those when you do upgrade to a, a bigger electric steering motor and you hit the point of one of those kicks out it's going to kick out and it's going to kick out hard and there ain't nothing you can do about stopping the wheel from going wherever it wants so um like i say i haven't run this kit yet but anybody who somebody has one of ross's kits on their cars and i've heard nothing but uh good things from it he's been super helpful to work with so i've had him i think i had him on the phone last night uh at like eight nine o'clock at night um super helpful to work with i've uh, just had a couple questions about my car is a little bit different so the the front bulkhead that we have is spaced out a, an inch to eliminate the lower control arm bolt doesn't go through a tube anymore so we were talking about what we were going to do to get everything to line back up and the bracketry to all work he got me squared away on that and we got a direction we're moving with um but back to the price thing i get real good at rambling on about nothing so you got 300 500 a grand so you're roughly two grand for that uh tie rod ends these things are depending on who you get something from anywhere from 200 to 400 dollars so i mean by the time you nickel and dime a few other things you got another 500 bucks in it so you're just to go with stock stuff you're 2500 dollars to towards replacing this and i don't know about you guys but i got 300 miles out of a stock rack and things junk and got two inches of steering play in it um he assures me that we're not going to have that issue no more with everything that he's got made he tells me the only thing that i can potentially bend is this bracket he said over time of me being me and abuse he's seen from big portal uh, rigs with 50 60 inch tires on them he says you can bow this this is a cheap part so i don't know what it costs individually but nothing else i can make that it's got two holes in it two pieces of looks like one inch flat stock that ain't nothing to 
nothing to build or replace so and anything to replace on this is three or four hundred dollars so um seeing another thing i had big questions about is the belt um trying to get it all put on the car um i haven't he's says he's got guys that ride in the mud every week with big portal rigs and they run in big swamp bounty mud holes and everything down south he says uh they'll wear the pulleys out of it before they ever throw the belts off of it so that gives you any kind of idea of uh what kind of setup he's got going on it definitely sounds like a good one but we're definitely going to put her through her paces and see what she's got so we'll get back at uh, throwing some parts on all right well back again keep uh knocking a little bit and a little bit and a little bit out of it uh each night after work so i don't think it's a super long process but definitely gonna have a few evenings in it i think i'm on night number three now or something like that so i haven't been working at it super hard but this is going together turned out pretty decent so um just getting some of the hydro lines in got them run down through the uh center console his instructions do it a little bit differently than how i run it but i didn't want anything down here his is like run through here and then he shoots them up in this little hole here um i didn't want anything in here potentially getting wound up in the drive shaft uh because that's gonna make for a mess if you get if you knock the drive shaft out of it and blow a line out so at least now it's got a little bit of protection from the plastic down there so um side piece still fits just had to cut a little bit of a hole in it for, for where it kicks out around the uh, shifter here i suppose you could run it on the other side but well i'm sure as anybody else's uh x3 they uh got wires and everything all shoved in over on the other side so um i run it through back up here and put a piece of rubber radiator hose around it to keep it from rubbing on anything got it nice and zip tied down in there so um i'm not real sure why but his instructions say that you're supposed to loop this line up front well i have a battery up there so that option don't really work so i'm hoping get the ram in there be something kind of like that because this needs to move back and forth with the ram so hopefully uh can get that situated in there pretty decent and uh get back on the next one so i got uh some other things to throw in there too i got uh, a couple of stm clutches i found a used set that was had a pretty good deal on them called them guys up and got a spring kit and stuff that they suggest for my setup and uh my style of riding so gonna see what these are all about they definitely look like uh pretty nice pieces and from what i've seen even buying brand new they are uh actually a little cheaper than other clutches you might buy that i haven't had very good luck with so um gonna see what those are all about hopefully get those put on here shortly so starting to get her wrapped up and close to the final product and get out and rip this thing see what she's all about so all right, well, I believe on your uh, factory Can-Am when you're installing this kit, the only uh, fabrication you'll have to do or whatever you want to call it, um, got to weld this plate to that, stick two bolts in it, that'll get it lined up. Uh, give her the old hot glue gun on each side of the bracket. So. Give her that, and then you're uh, ready to put the ram in. So. Uh, when you're putting it in, he's says to uh, bolt this bracket in because you're going to put your bolts through that way and you can't get them in once the ram's in there. So get that bolted on and locked down and ready to put the ram in it. All right, well, my uh, front end's extended an inch. I know we've said that a couple times in the video. So this is what we came up with because we need to get the Ackerman uh, correct for the steering geometry uh, from where my bulkhead is an inch farther forward. 
So we made, uh, well, Dane made some spacers. It goes in here and all interlocks together. Uh, still misalignment in the uh, heim joint. Uh, made this bracket just a little bit longer. And made a spacer for the backside here. Tie wired it all together. So let's see if we can get the rim put in it. On to the next one. All right, well, I finally got the uh, ram mounted in this thing. We had to do some fabrication to make everything work with uh, our bulkhead. So, me, Dane remade me some spacers here that we showed earlier in the video. Um, we had to remake this front bracket to make everything clear and line up the way it's supposed to. So, uh, it's got clearance for the drive shaft to turn around, and I hit the bottom of the ram. Um, obviously bolt that bracket over on the driver's side. Uh, you leave this bolted to the ram, slide everything in, and you can get your bolts in. You're going to have to take a drill and drill these out to a half inch because everything's going from metric to, uh, standard bolts now. So, uh, you're going to have to go through and drill all your holes out. Um, I'm not sure if, I'm sure this is supposed to be set up with, some sort of aftermarket fancy knuckles, but I don't have two grand to spend on those. So I'm running the OEM 22s, which have the bigger C-clip in the outside. And I will say we have access to a lathe, but these don't fit worth the crap. So uh, I think we had to end up taking about 40 thousandths or so off of them to get them to go inside the hubs. So keep that in mind. If you got 22 knuckles, um, you're gonna have to have a way to turn down the spacers to get them to go inside the, the knuckle so um hydraulic lines i kind of got those set up there and uh, they're not all zip tied up and out of the way but kind of the idea of what we got going on there so i'm gonna go back and put some rubber lines around anywhere that's gonna rub um when you turn this back and forth now everything's going to move outward to set your toe, you got to stick a, a tape measure. Obviously I just moved it, but you'll stick a tape measure in against the ram and measure to your bracket and get your uh, center of your ram centered your mount. Mine was three and an eighth on each side. And then uh, you can get it set down on the ground and set your toe. Um, other than that, just got a, a bracket to make to go on the uh, uh, power steering reservoir, get that mounted up, and uh, waiting on a couple more parts and pieces to show up, and see if we can get this thing fired up and see what it feels like. All right, well, YouTube's probably gonna yell at me for having music in the background, but that's our bracket we made to uh, hold the reservoir tank. So it will go in there. Something kind of like that. He sent me a bracket with it, and I'm not sure how much I paid for that thing, but uh, I don't know what you're putting that on, but that's where I'd put it, so. All right, well, as you can see, finally got it on the ground. Uh, we got the ram finished up, putting it in. Tie rod ends on it, got her all squared up. So, waiting on uh, one more spacer bracket that uh didn't get shipped in the order i guess the power steering mount the bracket is different from i believe it's 17 to 19 and then 20 which of course my luck and 20 they changed and it has a different bracket on it so we got mixed up in the ordering of it and it's missing a couple spacer brackets to get the pump alignment right on it but we got the reservoir mounted up in there. Got all the lines pretty well tucked up out of the way. So, just like I said, we got to take the pump back off and put that spacer bracket in it. But wanted to get everything buttoned up as much as I could. So, BMR is closing in on us faster than that. So, we got a little bit of a leaky shock. We're going to rip it apart and put some fluid and a couple seals in it. Um... Uh, one other thing to note that I was kind of curious about, and I'm sure anybody that's looked at hydro stuff, um, it's obviously there's no steering shaft that connects from the orbital to the ram, but it does steer super hard. 
but you can turn it without it running. So in the event of you break something or something happens with the motor, it runs out of gas, whatever you want to call it, you could essentially get it back to camp or whatever you need to do with it. But it does turn without the engine running. So we spun it over with a drill a little bit when we were priming the air out of the system. Um, we say we were just spinning it with a drill, only spinning 800 RPMs or something like that, and it does turn pretty easy. So definitely uh, super excited to get some parts in it and see if we can get it out and rip it around, see how it turns. So pretty excited to uh, hopefully not have the wheel ripped out of my hand no more. So got uh waiting on a clutch box to come in because it keeps spitting the belts out of the back with the old style clutches on it so uh that's supposed to be here next couple days we'll get that thrown on i threw the clutches on it the new clutches on it to hopefully try to dial them in a little bit before bmr uh, hopefully we have a little better setup than the kwi stuff that i was running so didn't have much luck for many of their stuff spent uh, numerous dollars with them and Nobody could seem to figure it out, so we switched it up and went with STM. I got a pretty good deal on a used set, so they are a little bit noisy uh, compared to like a stock clutch, but if it'll keep the belt on it, I'll deal with the noise, so. But that's it, other than uh, buttoning up a few things. I think we're going to throw some uh, new side panels on it, maybe a couple stickers, and try to maybe give her a rattle can in some spots and get her back up in tip-top shape all right well finally got the spacer pieces i needed to uh finish this up uh, i was mocking everything up and got it all kind of bolted on there the way uh his instructions said to and i noticed that the fitting the top fitting on the pump was hitting right here on his bracket so i had to grind a little bit off of that um I'm not too sure. I don't know if it's just the alignment of my motor and transmission or what, but the way the bracketry all interlocks together, you got three bolts here that are on the back side of the motor, and then you got two more that it goes into the transmission with another bracket that he's got made for that. And with everything bolted the way he says it does, it looks like I'm still going to have to shim the pump out just a little bit more than what he gives factory spacers for. So I'll have to get a longer bolt for that. Throw a couple uh, nice half-inch washers in there. And hopefully try to get the pump alignment dialed in on this thing. Um, be prepared to spend a little bit of time on this because uh, it looks like it's going to take a little bit of finesse and back and forth and whatnot of taking it back and forth back apart a couple times to make sure you get your alignment right so i'm gonna get it all lined up in there i'll show you what i did to finally end up getting it so. all right well i finally got the uh power steering pump pulley and bracketry and all that good stuff put on it uh, i got a few zip ties and stuff probably left to tie up yet but uh so 18 to 19 they got a different uh motor mount i guess or 17 through 19 is different from 20 to 24 whatever 23 whatever you want to call it um there's a a spacer bracket it's probably like a quarter inch that goes in behind these three bolts and then kind of hard to see but there's a bolt here and then there's a bolt under it that has a bracket on the back side down there you can kind of see um they get bolted into the transmission and motor mount get that put on then you can uh move back to here uh it come with two let's say probably three eighths uh, spacers i ended up having to put two more half inch washers in it, thin ones. So I can get my alignment right on my uh, belt for the pulleys to line up. And I'll put one, two on the top, two on the bottom, obviously. Um, the only thing I don't like, which I know it's different because it's not factory, but I think even in the factory aspect, it would be a little worse because you're gonna have 
these two coolant lines, if you still have a radiator in the front, these two coolant lines are both going to have to snake down in through here. And this is your fuel line. So I might have to look into getting a some AN fittings or something to go for the fuel line so we can try to reroute that, get that a little better set up. I don't really like that. If a belt chucks off of it and rips the fuel line off, the exhaust and everything else is right here. Might potentially cause a fire, so I don't really like that. There's not enough room to get it to go in behind the bracket, between the bracket and the transmission, and it still be long enough. So probably look into doing something with that. Um, you can see on this bracket from where I had to space it back, space it back to get everything to line up. I did have to clearance this on the top side of this bracket for this fitting to clear. I don't think it matters what fitting you end up running on here. I do think no matter how you screw it on there, you're gonna have to clearance that. So that's a little thing to add in there. You might do before you get it all bolted in there. This is kind of a little tedious to go all nuts and bolts and spacers and everything in there. So definitely uh, gonna wanna take your time on it. Make sure you get your belt alignment. So that's your Saving grace on getting her back to camp uh, with ease or not. Say, we drove it in out of the shop. We had some other stuff to work on, and you can drive it. It's probably equivalent to factory without having the key on. So I would say you could attempt to drive it back to camp. It's not going to be any fun, but uh, I'm going to get an extra spare belt and take with me um, just because. So, but that's uh pretty much it on the install get some other stuff bolted up that i got tore apart and we'll go out and fire this thing up and see how she works all right well i forgot to uh throw a couple things in there as i was putting it together uh, i get in a hurry and forget to uh pick the camera up and say something we checked it and done all the normal stuff but uh when you install this before you ever go drive it you need to jack it all the way up off the ground with your limit straps on and from this flat portion here on your shock to the center of this bolt is supposed to be 28 inches. If it is longer than that, you will break outer CVs. The hydro will push past the stock steering knuckle or the stock steering stops and will break them, guaranteed. Um, need to do that when bleeding the system or when you first go to fill it. Um, I only filled the reservoir about halfway up and then obviously jack the car up off the ground, uh, turn it by hand. It's going to take two to three minutes before you get fluid pumped up through it without the car running. Um, keep turning the wheel back and forth. Um, it will start to turn on its own once you get it to where it is turning um, back and forth on its own without it running. Then you can go through and put your belt on and do everything else. Um, since you got the coolant, since you had the coolant out of it, I would leave the belt off of it, get it fired up and get all your air bubbles bled out and do everything like that. Um, get all that stuff squared away, then throw your belt on it. Um, the fluid level is supposed to be, let's see if I can get a little better view over here. The fluid level is supposed to be uh, about three inches from the top. So just under this port here, somewhere right in there, that'll be about where your fluid level needs to be once it's bled out and got all your air pockets out of it. Um, don't fill this thing up clear full because it will spit out when it's uh, trying to bleed the system out and it will make a mess. So uh, when you're starting to fill it, put about half a quart in it um, or at least get some fluid in the bottom of it and then start working your steering wheel back and forth. Um, keep an eye on it, make sure it's not sucking the uh, reservoir dry. And then uh, keep adding fluid to it just a little bit at a time. I think it took right at two quarts for me to fill it up. So um, he'll give you the type of fluid that he recommends. I can't remember exactly what it is right off hand. It's like uh, Dextron power steering fluid if I remember right. but. If not, I'll throw it in there in the uh, uh, title at the end of the video. But uh, 
definitely uh super impressed say i've just uh kind of drove it around uh the driveway here we got about an inch and a half of rain last night so i don't want to go out and completely mud bog the thing um my shock seals are supposed to show up today day or tomorrow uh that's why i got this stuff all kind of out in the open uh get those torn off of there get the shock seals replaced check the nitrogen on all of them uh i'm gonna make a couple of new side panels get some new stickers thrown on there get her looking a little better than uh her beat self but definitely uh super excited to uh finally have some good steering on the old girl so get her cleaned up and get another clip thrown in here of uh throw her out in my field and we'll rip her around a little bit maybe and the uh next clip start getting this clutching dialed in and whatnot and be uh ready to beauty up a couple of cans sc1 she'll be bmr ready so come on all right well i'm sure it's probably hard to hear me but uh there's four wheel drive there's dip lock locked in she lit up one finger effortless that's full lock this is going to be a game changer for sure 100 percent anyone that knows they got diff lock in their can am tell them to go turn around with one finger and let me know how it works for them that is insane i love it changer do a little reverse still in dip lock got this old girl finished up about to get her fired up get some heat put in her uh, go out and take her around I had her out the other day drove around a little bit it was super wet out so it's a little bit nicer day out but still muddy uh we ended up finding a couple shocks we wasn't happy with so all four of those got a full rebuild and some seals in it check the nitrogen out on them uh got uh, a few more lines zip tied up now the way a few more things cleaned up on it uh got some new side panels made for it got some stickers coming for it to get put back on there and get her looking right so uh we'll get her fired up and go put her out in the field and see how she does so
over there, so. First impressions of it is definitely going to have to figure out how to calm down in it. There is zero effort required in driving it now, so definitely wild compared to stock. So. Alright, well, that does it for the install of the hydro. I would, uh, definitely say that ought to be a game changer i am definitely gonna have to learn how to calm down driving it though um it is world of difference there's very very little feedback in the steering wheel now um obviously my car is not set up at all for the i guess you'd call it short course stuff that we were doing out there um and it's got 20 inches of ground clearance it's set up to bounce up and down some rocks so um, don't take much of that into consideration for it trying to three wheel and whatnot driving around, but uh, definitely seems to be in uh, probably the best shape she's been in, in a while. Say we got uh, new shocks on it, or not new, but went through and put new seals, foil, all that good stuff. Made them all nice and fresh again. So, see, uh, Dane with Black Market Fabrication got me all hooked up with everything. He's my uh, definite go to fab guy, so. Uh, helps me out in more ways than one so give him a big shout out so go around it and give it a nut and bolt check get her washed up throw some uh check the fluids on it and uh we'll see you out at bmr so thanks for watching appreciate the hell out of it come on